Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. Mm -hmm. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Well, it's always the best of times for the, for the CEOs. <laughs> we're we're going to talk about the uh, disparity between the uh, Disney executives and Disney employees, and it becomes more and more obvious now as the salaries of, of Disney execs uh, being revealed. And, uh, you know, Bob Bob Iger's massive, massive paycheck as he cashes out from the mm -hmm. company was nine figures. Yeah, he said that he's going to get nine figures. Nine uh, figures. With the end. Now, this isn't going to show up in this because... This is we have their their pays for the end of 2020 through 2021. What it does is it goes from October 2020 to the end of September 2021. His uh, cash out will be the show is like this, like December 31st of 2021, and apparently that was a nine figure amount. Oh my god! Because he totally deserves that. He does. Yeah. Right. Well, we're gonna talk about that because they justify it. They justify it uh, in the filing. And then we're going to talk about Abigail Disney and what is basically Dismal Disney, the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to be in a documentary talking about the poor working conditions and poor pay at Disneyland in particular. And she's going to rail against the company. Now, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've got these, these ridiculous executive payouts. But again, this is a, a company that makes a lot of money. But then on the other hand, we've got Abigail Disney saying that, you know, Basically, everybody should have a cushy union job, and even if you're running Space Mountain, you should be making you know six figures. Right, but the you problem know. is it's beyond that. It's like it's it, they're deliberately set up that they can't make forty hours a week and different right. things like that. There's a lot going on. It isn't just that. Yeah, so we're we're gonna we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about it because you know I, we can verify from people we know who still work in the company that yeah Disney does kind of uh, uh, play three-card money with their employees' schedules. And, you know, if you work for Disney, you work for Disney, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You're you're basically part of the Disney family until you're not, and then they just toss you overboard like a piece of trash that they won't pick up. Like a dirty diaper, they'll just be left laying on the ground because nobody picks the trash up anymore at Disney. Well, it seems like there's pictures all the time of garbage overflowing trash cans because they can't, they don't have enough employees. Oh yeah, that's something else I saw today. I didn't read the whole thing, but apparently they're offering up to $6,000 in bonuses to get new cast members of Walt Disney World. Wow, remember when people used to line up to work for Disney? Remember when they had a lot of people they let go? Yeah, they probably remember too. That's why they're not going back. They wouldn't find other jobs. I wouldn't. I'd be like, Pfft. You know, we're family, right? People that were there for decades are just out the door. It's a Disney difference. That's a Disney difference. So we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 254,000 subs. Woo! Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about Disney, uh, having worked in and around the company. And uh, Geeky is actually going to steer this video because she did an article on piratesandprincesses.net, mm -hmm. which is a Disney blog she runs. And, uh, you know, we're going to kind of take you through how much money these these people are making. Yeah. So we got the, the amounts from, um, can I have the mouse? Okay, from last year. So apparently, okay, during the pandemic, they had that uh, Bob Chapek was given $14.1 during how, the pandemic, okay. How, how does he live on that? I know, I right. It's so sad. And then they upped the thirty two point four six million because then all the parks got reopened and mm. all the price hikes with the parking and the tickets and the food and everything else. They keep jacking up on the guests. Mm -hmm. um, that all came in because you know when they started opening the parks back at like Walt Disney World in twenty twenty, uh, they made sure that they had reduced hours, reduced everything, but at full price. Um, Bob Iger made $21 million in the previous fiscal year, but he made $45.9 million before his nine-figure payout. Um, I'm going to go to the original source, which was The Hollywood Reporter. So that was the compensation that they reported to the SEC for the last mm. year. Um, it doesn't count like his other, all the other stuff that get right here. Doesn't include his end-of-year contract stock grant, which was awarded to him on December 31st and was in the nine figures. Nine figures. Nine figures. That is a lot of lot of money. Mm-hmm. So you can read their their justification for it. Yeah. So this is uh, this is coming from their filing. So they said uh, Chapek. Uh, this is Bob Chapek first delivered strong performance given the unprecedented challenges resulting from the COVID nineteen pandemic and meaningful shareholder value driven by exceptional 
execution of the company's key strategic initiatives, uh, while Iger successfully directed the company's creative endeavors. I mean, he spent a lot of money and bought a lot of shit. Yep. Uh, we're going to get there. Yep. Which are the cornerstone of the company's strategy and fuel for the continued growth and expansion of Disney+. Plus. He spent a lot of money. Yep. 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 Um, then they say down here, this is interesting, the impact Bob, and I'm assuming this is Iger, the impact Bob had during his time at the company is difficult to overstate. During his tenure as CEO, Bob initiated the company's direct-to-consumer. Direct they yep. restructured the whole damn company. DTC efforts expanded our geographic presence, including opening our first theme park in China. Yeah, because he and then he tried to get himself an ambassadorship to China. And further Disney's rich history of storytelling through landmark acquisitions. Okay, let's talk about this for a minute. Go ahead, read them off. Read the first one. Of Pixar. Pixar, which is now basically relegated to being a Disney Plus fodder company. Yep, direct to direct to streaming. Marvel. Well, we know what they've done to Marvel. Uh, Spider Man did great thanks to Sony. Uh, Eternals, on the other hand, mm, mm. And Lucas, Phase Four. Phase Four. Yeah, Lucasfilm. Yeah, we all know where that's going. And Twenty First Century Fox. Again, they don't do much with that, and what they have done with that has not been performing well. Yeah, I'm trying to think like what what have they done with Fox? Well, they had a really shitty Home Alone movie. Uh, they had a lawsuit over Predator, which I guess they threw money at the guys to go away. Uh, Alien, who the hell cares? And it's probably going to be nerfed anyway. And then uh, what else do they have? They don't really have a well, whole they had lot. Like, what, they had like, what, the Kingsman is out. And then that bombed. The, the Death in the Nile was coming out. It's, I think what? It, it's, who yeah, cares? Yeah, exactly. It's all stuff that no one really gives a shit about. Nobody really gives a shit Meanwhile, about Meanwhile, Sony's kicking all their asses. Pretty much. Um. So, yeah, he oversaw Disney's creative endeavors, providing audiences with engaging stories and compelling characters. We bought engaging stories and compelling characters, and then we flushed them down yeah, the toilet. Yeah, we mismanaged it significantly, yes. Uh, Chapek said about the other Bob, Bob has left an indelible mark on the company, and his contributions will last for generations to come. It's gonna <laughs> yep. Take generations to pay it off. Yep. Pay it generations off. Yeah. of gouging the guests. So we have these executives getting this ridiculous amount of money. You had Christine McCarthy, who got the really high salary and lots of bonuses. And people brought that up. And then she's the one that was uh, you know, inadvertently insulting guests by saying, hey, to offset the cost so we don't have to eat them and our investors don't have to eat them, we're just going to pass it down to the consumers in larger you know, cost and smaller portions because, you know, they're fat anyway. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing, though. Uh, you know, Bob Chapek. Now, a lot of the stuff, you know, was while he was in, you know, happened. A lot of the changes, the uh, upcharges, well, he was in charge of the parks. But he's going to get blamed, I think, for a lot of uh, Iger's overspending, too, because mm -hmm. now they got to make extra money to. Well, yeah, you know. I mean, Chapek is responsible for a lot of the cuts that were leading up, like, the, you know, the Epcot and then over at, you know, the Galaxy's Edge. Mm -hmm. And then when they cut shit, they promised. That was mostly Chapek. And even now, people are complaining that when they visit the parks, um, there's a lot of you know stuff that's not being maintained. Yeah. Uh, that that there's a lot of trash everywhere. That uh, cast members aren't as being as friendly as they used to be because they're overworked beyond belief. I mean, six thousand dollar bonuses just to get new cast members. I don't know which departments, but I know they were given bonuses for food uh, workers yeah. before. Yeah. Um, because people don't, people are like so fed up, and and it's just a big mess. But it's not all his fault because a lot of the stuff was greenlit by Iger, like the Genie Plus, and then some of the other choices with, uh, you know, different things they've done. It was under Iger before Chapek even got, you know, put in that position. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's going to be really interesting, though. A lot of Disney fans, longtime Disney fans, uh, very angry, turning on Disney. We've seen, you know, some of the most diehard Disney defenders completely flip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got people holding signs up about how awful Bob Chapek is. Well, they aren't paying people on one hand, and then they're like $6,000 for less than two-day LARPing experience on the other. It's just, it's just, and only if you stay at the deluxe and pay out the nose, you get extra hours that the riffraff don't get. It's clearly becoming them and their friends versus everyone else. Uh -huh. And it's, it's insane. So let's, you know, speaking of anger, let's talk about Abigail Disney, because mm. I don't think I've ever seen this woman happy, ever. Every time I see her, they always pick the worst possible picture. She's always screaming. Uh, so Abigail Disney has long rallied against uh, the treatment of the workers in Disneyland. Now, she has benefited for many years mm -hmm. from the uh, treatment of the workers in Disneyland, low pay. Uh, but now she is an activist, kind of like uh, Mrs. Banks and Mary Poppins, I guess. But... 
but uh, she is speaking out and she is uh, uh, producing what could best be described as Dismal Disney, the movie. <laughs> the documentary. The documentary. Mm-hmm. Dis- Dismal Disney, the motion picture. Which is going to, to be at the, sun, at the what, Sundance. Sundance, yeah. Um, and the, she's going to promote the, the Sundance about basically the unfair labor practices and the way that cast members are treated. Now, we've reported on this before. I can tell you for a fact that there has been cases with litigation and there's been union movements and different things to try to help um, make sure that the pay is more fair. Now, we know that you, someone running like Space Mountain shouldn't get paid as like a CEO and no one's arguing they should. But the, 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 the gap, the wage gap between the two, it becomes increasingly wider and wider and wider with all the benefits going to certain people. And then the ones that are actually the ones making the magic, keeping it going are the ones who are getting the shaft. Yeah, and and again, you know, Disneyland is in Southern California. Uh, Disney World is in Central Florida. The cost of living between those two areas is is markedly different. Mm-hmm. But cast members were paid. Now I don't know what the union negotiations were like, but basically the same same range, right? And it's very hard to live in Southern California on like twelve to fifteen dollars an hour, or whatever they're they're getting paid. Right, and according to Abigail Disney, that they do things to make sure that they can't like take extra work on to try to to fix that. So I guess she's doing this with filmmaker Kathleen Hughes. It's going to premiere tw- January twenty fourth at the Sun at Sundance. Um, Ahead of the festival. Wait, January, uh, Sundance. Sorry, it's right in the film Park City. Okay, Park City ahead of the festival. Okay, so what she said was, um, that what set her off was somebody, you know, wrote her like 2018 or 2019 and told them what they, you know, mm-hmm. what they go through. And she's like, I, I know I was really naive and I had so many naive assumptions. And she's talking about, you know, when she was there with her grandfather, which was Roy Disney, mm. she saw him picking up trash and she asked him, why did he do that? And he said, because nobody's too good to pick up a piece of garbage. And I want people who work here to know that I know that. Yeah. These people work so hard, you need to respect them. That's how she was raised. That's how I was raised. And that is not the way that they are treated by powers that be now. Yeah. And, then, you know, again, this is, you know, we talk about, you know, people being, you know, moving into a warm seat. And you could, you could say that Disney executives absolutely moved into... She's smiling. Oh, my God. She's smiling. She's smiling. Go ahead. The executives actually uh, moved into. Yeah. They, they uh, you know, moved into a warm seat that the, the Disney family built. That even, it could be argued, Michael Eisner built. And I, I would argue people say what they want to say about Michael Eisner. But I think he seemed like he had more of a uh, roll up your shirt sleeves and get to work kind of an attitude. And he pulled Disney out of a tailspin. Mm-hmm. You know, compared to the guys that have been there lately. Iger's legacy is I bought a lot of shit and cost yeah. us a lot of money. All I'm thinking about is like Elizabeth Warren calling them out back when this whole pandemic thing started. And the and the cast members are the ones who got treated the worst. Executives got a pay cut, but they got to keep their jobs and got the money reinstated. People, Other people got laid off and then let go completely. And they're like, well, if you had never spent and made sure you got all these stock dividends for record stock years and given all, all this money, the company would have had enough money that it would have been able to take care of their people. And so, I mean, yeah, you bought a lot of shit, but it was not necessarily the best thing. Well, this is what she's saying the problem is. You can go ahead and read it. Yeah, she said that uh, Chapek was the guy who presided over all the changes at Disneyland and Disney World that we're talking about in this film. Dynamic scheduling, a euphemism for jerking them around so they can't get a second job and they never make 40 hours a week and they don't qualify for health care. That, I know, is true. Um, then it also goes on saying taking a department of 250, shaving it to 200, and expecting them to do all the same amount of work. We know that's true, too. Not just here. That's true across many companies. That is true across many companies, yeah. So, I mean, it's going to be really interesting that Disney is – I mean, it's so weird. Like, on one hand, they're trying to cater to the rich, but then they're also pleading poverty with their employees mm-hmm. – and it's it's gonna it's gonna definitely uh, uh, reach ahead, I think. Well, they're putting poverty to their employees, and then you're seeing these SEC filings of how much they made, and you know that Bob Iger got nine figures on the way out. Yeah, and again, you know, Christine McCarthy's eleven million dollar bonus from a couple of years ago would have bankrolled the cast member uh, soup kitchen food, food pantry, pantry for ten years. Yeah, I there think. was a food pantry, and it was the cast members and the unions around them that that were taking care of each other. Hours long wait to get food because they didn't have any money. And then there was a whole this, a whole bunch of issues like I know of Florida where they were supposed to file with unemployment and there was something screwed up at the company and people weren't getting their checks for unemployment even. It was a, call, a complete mess. But yet the executives were complaining about, well, we want our full payback. We, yeah. we, we had to take a pay cut. What the hell? 
And it's, that just shows you what's going on. So you have this juxtaposition of people, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying people should get paid a bunch of money for things they didn't, they, they shouldn't get paid a bunch of money for. But what I'm saying is there needs to be some, you know, this needs to be looked at a little bit better the whole way across the board because the people that are bringing the magic, the people that are, you know, making people come back and people are excited to visit because they're the ones doing everything are the ones that get treated like shit. And then you have the figureheads who keep making dumb bonehead decisions and ruining franchises, yeah. walking away with millions, taking full credit for everybody else's work. There needs to be um, a little bit, you know, at least it be handled a little bit better. Yeah. And it's, you know, universal to their credit, you know, they definitely have, have picked up the slack, I think, in some regard. In some ways, I would say Universal's been handling, um, you know, its team members better than Disney's been handling its cast members. And the thing is, Disney keeps selling, and this is, you know, employees were in for a very rude awakening when they, they were called and referred to as employees. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, line that you're sold, whether you work, you know, directly for the company or you work around the company or whatever, is, hey, you're family. You're part of the family. They, they sold us that line. They're like, oh, yeah, you're our... Our media shills, but you're you're part of the family, right? You know, we consider you part of the family. Well, and then to go further, yeah. you know, besides the the company people, what about all the the fans and the park guests and the guests yeah. that have kept it going? They had been fleeced, bilked, whatever you want to call it, for years. You know, just gouged, price gouged time and time again. Things that were perks were now being charged. This is before COVID hit. And now you have just price increases on food just the other day. And they keep raising prices, the cutting back what you get for the prices. Um, only the people that spend a lot can, you know, now you want to, you want to ride rides, you have to spend more money. You want to get extra time in the parks after hours, you have to spend more money. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you can get 30 minutes, uh, it used to be an hour. Now you get 30 minutes if you stay at a resort hotel. And then those who stay at Luxes can get like an hour after park, you know, because they're them. And then it's just getting ridiculous and people are sick of it. And on top of it, we're having this huge financial issues coming our way. People aren't going to have the money. To go spend a shit ton of money at Disney. And, get, and then what's going to happen then? The, who are they going to get the money from? If the guests aren't there, yep. uh, they'll start throwing people overboard. Because it will never be the people at the top. People at the top will get to walk away with And if they do get gone, they'll get some millions of dollars in parachute money. Oh, absolutely. You I mean, know, they never they never lose. Well, it's like uh, Bobby Kotick with uh, Activision Blizzard. I mean, he burnt the company down basically. And he still gets a $300 million mm -hmm. golden parachute. I mean, yeah, you never lose. When you're one of these people. It's a golden um, shower for everybody else. Yeah, it's a golden shower for everybody else. But like, you know, I mean, this is this is going to be interesting. You mentioned that because, you know, I'm reading a lot of the, uh, you know, stock magazines and, and uh, websites. And they're saying that 2022, we're going to see a bubble uh, pop, you know. And a lot of that was propped up by meme stocks, people investing their stimulus money. Um, people thinking that the, the economy was going to come back roaring, that we were over the pandemic because of the, you know, the vaccine and all this. And it turns out that we're still in the thick of it. Right. And, and I, I do think in the case of Disney, I think there was, you know, they, they talked about pent up demand. I think mm -hmm. there was pent up demand. I think people went and uh, they also had stimulus money. And they went and they spent that on vacation because they figured God knows we need it. We've been mm -hmm. in lockdown for a year. And now that that's, that's kind of over and done with, now it's like, am I going to go? And then, you know, they're getting gouged and then they're going to be like, am I going to go back anytime soon? Now I'm good for the next five, 10 years. You know, a lot of people, most people, they go to Disney as a family. A lot of them, they only go once mm -hmm. every five or 10 years. You know, and then things like, you know, I guess one of the reasons that the Star Cruiser is losing bookings isn't just the, the whole, it doesn't look like Star Wars. People are seeing what's coming out of the pipeline and they're like, shit, I can't justify just paying for the hotel room for two days, $6,000 not counting if we want to go to any other stuff, if we have to pay to get there, if we have to pay for souvenirs, any upcharges, which they're going to have mm -hmm. tons of upcharges in this place, guaranteed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to probably tell you about till you get there. So, I mean, it's just people can't. And I, and sadly, what's going to happen is, again, if, if, if people do start you know, pulling and not coming in, like right now they're flooded, but as people start you know, pulling back, they're gonna. They're just gonna pass the buck down to the guests and to the people at the, at, you know, the bottom. Yeah, and that's that's usually how it works. And eventually, Disney's gonna have to, I think, at least in the theme parks, reevaluate their business plan. Mm -hmm. I, I think they they are eventually, but that's not gonna happen until you know dumbasses stop spending you know tens of thousands of dollars on luxury vacations. Yeah. Then people keep, you know, they, then they're gonna keep going with Disney Plus. Disney Plus is the only thing they had for a while, and they keep, you know, they keep dumping money into that. It's not gonna really be profitable forever, but they're flatlining on subs. 
So this is a cluster. Speaking of Disney Plus, I think it's funny. They ask her a bunch of questions. They ask her, uh, you know, how her family feels. She says she does have some family members that are supportive. I mean, she's been hands down the most vocal Disney. Mm. But they ask her if she's trying to sell the Disney Plus as documentary. And she's like, no. Well, it's funny. I ended mine with uh, asking about Iger if he was going to what he's going to do with the data because remember he's always about data, data, yeah. data, data. And I put quotes in here, and then I said, "There's some data you can crunch, Bob." <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, all kinds of links to everything I said. Yeah, there's still a prediction out there, and I, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. But there's a prediction out there that uh, Iger might come back as CEO before the end of the year. I don't believe that. I don't, well, that would be really shitty because they just gave him a nine-figure cash out. I, I better not. I mean, if I if I were guests and, and employees, I would be so pissed. I'm like, wait, you gave him nine figures to cash out, then you're paying him a shit ton of money to come back. And a lot of the reasons, and being completely honest, a lot of the reasons I'm in trouble they're having now is because of the stupid decisions he made five yeah. or six years ago. It's, it's trickle down economics. Yeah. It, but this is not it, it's in the way that it, all the shit runs downhill. It's not like the way they always tell you it is. It's the, 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 the actual trickle down economics. Not the, uh, yeah, it's a golden shower, like we yes. talked about earlier. Uh, anyway, are we going to wrap this yes. one up? So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Bye.